Alrighty, welcome everyone. I'm Tiabu and I am here for Retro Monday Overdrive, and I'm sorry. Uh, last week on Overdrive, we watched a fantastic piece of media, in my personal opinion. We watched Project Aiko, a nice feature-length film that was chock full of silly bits and wonderful gags and great animation and cool characters and great ideas and good pacing and cool storytelling and good framing and, and great animation. I think I already said that. It was really fun all the way through, and I had a really good time with it. There was definitely some delay in getting to it. I apologize for that, but I think that some of you may agree with me that it was worth it. If you disagree, that's totally fine too, but I think it was worth the wait because Project Aiko was legendarily good uh, last week when we watched it. Before we watched Project Aiko, we watched BB Fish, which I think was not so good. Um, BB Fish was an incomprehensible mess slurry, but it had some redeeming qualities in that its visual language was really pretty, its backgrounds were lovely, and it told a weird and atmospheric story that didn't make any sense to me, but was still weird and atmospheric and at least succeeded in creating a vibe and a mood and maybe a couple of contradictory moods that was weird, but it still did something and that was fun. This week, after watching Project Aiko, I want to watch something dumb and bad. And to be fair, we've done this before on the Overdrive slot. We did it with Generation of Chaos, and it was dumb and bad. We did it with, uh, I guess it's not on this slot, but Tenku Dan's Auto Skelter Heaven and Mars of Destruction. Watching bad things is something that I find really fun sometimes, but there are limits, and I don't know if what we're going to watch today is on one side or the other side of those limits. Thankfully, it's only half an hour long, so hopefully we will survive this without brains leaking out of our ears, uh, but there's a distinct possibility that this is going to be really a struggle. I don't know. I'm going to try to have fun with it. I'm going to try to have a really good time, but I suppose I'll just reveal to you what I plan to do today. My plan for the day is to watch something astoundingly low budget, dramatically under, under animated, powerfully below mediocre. Um, made infamous by some videos by the YouTuber Kenny Lauderdale, we are going to watch Twinkle Nora Rock Me. This is a, actually technically a sequel to Nora, which is an hour-long OVA that I ain't got time for. I'm here for the bad stuff, and Nora is better rated than Twinkle Nora Rock Me, and I don't think that we're going to need the previous storyline at all. I just don't think it's going to be necessary, so we're going straight into the good stuff, which is to say the bad stuff. You get where I'm coming from? Great. Um, I did a little bit of research on this show beforehand because I had heard before, and I think a long time ago I saw those Ken Kenny Lauderdale vi videos. I haven't seen them recently. I do remember some jank-ass animation that was just bad, and like a dancing scene that was awful. We'll probably recognize it when we get to it in the actual show or the actual piece of media, but um, oh boy. I went looking to see, like, it, could I find, without spoiling myself on what's what we're going to experience, any reasons behind why it is the way that it is. And there was only one thing that I could really find, or two, I suppose. One thing is that it had an astoundingly low budget, thank you TV Tropes for that information. And the other thing was that, oddly enough, this show was animated on computers before it was normal to animate things with digital ink, digital ink and tools, and that's really interesting. It indicates to me that probably these animators were working with unfamiliar technology, and more importantly, perhaps, technology that wasn't built for the purpose, the, like using computers that didn't have easy programs for animation and trying to jury-rig them to make animation happen, which is actually really cool in its own right. Is it an excuse for creating something awful? Well, it's the reason behind it. Does it excuse creating something awful? I don't know. And especially because that awfulness is probably more to do with the astoundingly low budget than the new tools, but it's an interesting element and the only indicator I could find of a theory that somebody has presented or put forward as to why this thing turned out to be so apparently legendarily bad. Um, I'm kind of excited. I hope that we can have a good time with this because bad things that are just bad are bleh. But um, if we can make fun of it all the way through and sort of treat it like we're dumb and watching something together as a group, then it can be really fun. Um, unlike some of the other bad reviews that I've done before, like Skelter Heaven, I have no idea what we're in for, really. I've, again, seen a couple of scenes probably, but... Um, 
this isn't going to be like Skelter Heaven where I'm going through it. I'm like, ooh, wait for the next thing that's coming. I don't know what the next th next thing that's coming is. I've never seen this before. I've never seen this show, OVA, whatever it is. And so I have only the lowest, barest bones of expectations, and I'm excited to get into it. So that's what we're going to do. Uh, we're going to keep an eye on the animation because it's going to be awful, I'm sure. We'll try to do what we can to follow plot, and we will do everything in our power to make fun of anything that is fun-worthy to be made of. That was grammar. Um, that's about my whole spiel for the beginning of this video, so let's go ahead and move on into it. I've gone ahead and downloaded the version with the most seeds. This is the Orphan version, version 2. Uh, so this is Orphan V2 of Twinkle Nora Rock Me! Um, I downloaded it. I've got it. It's 29 minutes and 54 seconds long, and hopefully we come out this uh, 29 minutes with our heads still intact and our brains within our skulls and not scattered across the floor. But we'll see as we get into it. Cool. Um, there will be two versions, as usual, for Overdrive. There will be a picture-in-picture -picture version available in the description, a timer-based version up on YouTube, and a beep beep timer to count you down. If you'd like to support the channel and everything that I do, likes, comments, subscribes are all good for that. Patreon linked in the description is the main way that I make money and survive and can buy food and eat and stuff, and that's very useful. So if you'd like to me to continue doing what I do, that's a great way to ensure that I can do that. Uh, thank you so much for all of you who already do. Let's get into Twinkle Nora Rock Me and see what we've just bitten off and whether it's more than we can chew. Beep beep timer. Actually, I'm going to take a little break for a sec, but then beep beep timer. Okay, let's get right on into it. Beep beep timer. It's like even the intro is a little messed up. Oh, this is quite an... Wow, we have CG rings for Pony Video. Pony Canyon. I was like, why is it PC when it's PV? No, Pony Canyon. Film Link presents... Stars. Space. Beautiful sound effects. Oh boy. Mmm, fire. Ah. <laughs> oh. oh, okay. What's wrong with your eyes? Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> okay. Oh, we are not moving. Oh, we're moving. Oh, we moved. Oh, we moved again. Oh, we are sure moving now. Oh, there you go. She's moving. That was movement. We animated that for sure. I mean, this is fine. Oh, okay, that's not as fine. <laughs> stop, stop it. <laughs> I'm getting dizzy. Awkward. Thank you, Orphan Fan Subs. A direct to video film, I believe it. Holy shit. Cool song, though, I guess. Hey, these backgrounds are nice. Oh no! What? <laughs> oh, there's no animation. Oh no, it's a it's like a flip book. There are no no tweens. Oh no. Oh no. What? How do you not see her, dude? Oh, that's I mean, if this were just a stylistic choice, it would actually be really fun, but I don't think it is. 
Oh no. <laughs> what? How did you wobble there? Huh? What? Don't have any roll? Let's go, Nora. Fix the problem. Save the girl. What? And we've still got the upbeat music going. Wait, you're gonna tell a, a terrorist to don't behave like that? Oh, and Nora is all sad. What? You're just walking next to this guy and he's just fine with this? I, I'm, I'm extremely uh, sorry. What? No, 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 no. what? Oh, he's sliding so hard. I'm sorry, what happened? What was magnificent? Fuck you! What? No, take the money! Yeah, okay. Take the money. Thank you. I mean, the... what? これは私の趣味の問題だからさ。決まった。1万ドル不意にして言えるセリフじゃないね。あ、なるなるなるなるなるなるなるなるなるなるなるなるなるなるなるなるなるなるなるなるなるなるなるなるなるなるなるなるな
That's a big boy. What? Oh, here we go. I recognize that person. I think. Everybody eyes on. What? What? Oh, there's some animation. I'm sorry, you're trying to hurt or rape her. Fuck off. Yep, rape. Tokyo Tomete! Sawardo! Did she just time stop? Oh, beefcake. Tuchino? He's Tuchino? It's a little on the nose, isn't it? What ha What caused that? Why? You had a... What? He what? He what? That seems like his problem. They named him Touchy No? Touchy No. No Touchy. What? No! Absolutely unacceptable behavior for an adult male. Cease. No. Cease your behavior. Okay, at least that was animated. Alright, so there's this tiny guy. You might want to. Thanks for the exposition. Of course you do. Bro. Dude, the entire sense of space and scale is just wrong. I don't think so. <laughs> Honestly, that's a pretty straightforward reaction. Why is this guy following you? I guess you saved his ass, kind of, but... There's something wrong with the audio track. It's like... That actually tracks in terms of story. I don't know why we attacked the Tuchino and whatever, but. Great. Bounty hunter? Why not? I have magic powers, dude. I just showed you fucking magic powers. Oh, a lady touch me on shoulder. God damn it, everybody's fucking freaky. Where? You burned your money. Oh, sick. Hey, at least he's straightforward. Love, baby. <laughs> what? I'm, I'm enjoying this so far. I'm having fun with how weird this is. I'm also intrigued because there's some story stuff going on that's not the worst I've ever seen. It's bad, but it's not the worst I've ever seen. Straight birth. That was just birth. That was- that- that rock formation was straight from birth. Right? What the fuck? Oh, hi. Oh, hi, buddy. Oh, was he the guy from the intro? Wow, where do you have cameras? Okay. 
It's like weird twitching all the time. Also, his voice actor is like either too far away from the microphone or they've toned him down too much or something. He's like almost inaudible. Girl, thank you for the exposition. Appreciate it. Oh. This is a good way to do it if you don't want to animate stuff. This is better. Also, is a, it looks like Dragon's Heaven, the art style, with all the little dots of, of shadow. Looks a lot like Dragon's Heaven. It's really cool. That's great! Look at that! That looks great! A frightening power. Okay. To what? His name is Max. With dance. Some fucking beastly. Let's go. Oh, she pretty. Okay. All you gotta do is tell me where he's at. Oh. Nora, <laughs> Oh god. Oh god. Here we go. <gasps> Dance. Come on, Max. Nora. One, two, three, four. Okay, now we get an actual drum kit coming in now. Because we, we can't hold on that shit. Oh, it's gone now. It's fully gone. Let's go, Max. Dance to the music, 80s style. Ding, 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 dong, ding, dong, dang. Oh, no. This is what I've seen. <laughs> Go to be <laughs> Oh, whoever did this has no idea how dancing works. Like no I no clue. Oh, we're going for it now, and we're together. Oh, I'm slapping and sliding. Here we go. What? How did they physically what? Oh, it's just gone. They lost it. They lost it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> oh, magic. Took me a second there. We doing a romance here? Like, what the fuck? What? We're close. We're close. What? I mean, he's clearly seeing this this way, but... <laughs> I think we're tripping balls, dude. Whoa. What is that? What did he just do? What is he doing? Stop it. <laughs> oh, that's super cool. I like this. I don't like this. 
Fuchudo and Touchy No. Touchy No, the No Touchy. Oh, this is all oh, these filler scenes. These fucking filler scenes. Where, suddenly there's a thing happening? You are helping. You're telling her where it is. Oh. Sitting in my penthouse apartment. Bruh. Bruh. Double bruh. No touchy. I'm sorry, what? Listen to your fucking superiors. <laughs> oh, wow. Yep. That doesn't seem stable. Right? There's, there's no way. Ah, we found the hideout. Max, go somewhere safe. Arigato. Definitely. The gib? He can't do it. Yeah. All right, bro. Max. Aww. He's gonna come in and rescue her in a crucial moment or some shit. If if we're gonna be thematically relevant about this and like smart. Okay, we got the music coming in. Do we get a dance fight or something? Wow. The animation just so so tip top. Wow. Look how my god actually that was that was a cool scene. Oh god. Oh my my vertigo. I do think the music is pretty groovy so far. What? It's gotta be magic powers, right? Cool fire. Really good looking fire. I don't like the saturation of it, but it's really good looking. Bruh. Nora! Nora! I don't know if it's an illusion. Might be real fire, dude. Oh! Sure. What was... What? Oh, she just eliminated it. I see. Bye! Oh. That's not an illusion. Ding! Nothing. Alright, that's pretty sick. The power that Nora has... Oh, there you got him. Makes this... Like, there's no tension. What? Nope. Sad guitar. Ugh. Okay, a cool warp. 
god. What's wrong with its tongue? Nora! Ha 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 ha, got him. What? I am victorious. Just kidding. Gitni taista monda. Kono wa shi wo aite ni gobu no shoubu to wa na. What the fuck? Guys, stop it. <laughs> That's actually really cool. Oh, I don't like it. Oh, it's all gooperly. Let's go, Max. Save her in a crucial moment, and then she'll love you. That's how stories work. <laughs> no, fuck you, dude. Let's go, Max. Let's go. Come on. Oh, big, big, big beef early. Dance him, dance him to death. Dance him to death. What the fuck? Come on, man. <laughs> okay. Nice miss. What? Oh, that's bad. Seems like the only thing worthwhile. God fucking damn it! Stop implying rape! Oh. Ding! Waiting for that. Oh. Oh! That's exactly what you said you were gonna do to her. She gonna explode? Stop it. Dude, I don't like the winking to murder. I don't like winks equal murder. I don't, I don't like that. What? Nope. Oh. What happened to the other guy? Oh, how did you swing that? Okay, that's great, but what? Sure. Oh, and now we get a dance number because we finish it up. And it's the same band. Because we don't have to animate them again. Hey. What? Aww. That's weird to zoom into a woman singing with a man's voice in the, in the music. What the fuck? Oh, it's, it's that guy. Who's apparently a cyborg? Max, you okay? He looks really uncomfortable that right there for a second, and we're just gonna fade out and ignore it. Stop, dude. Just sing in Japanese. You're fine. All right, that's better. Holy what? Like a space. What the fuck?
All right, the world is absurd and nothing matters. This is great. Still a couple minutes left. I don't know. I'm just gonna let it play because I'm, I'm I'm excited and the song is fine. So why not? fading out for a sec, so nope, it's gonna keep going. was Twinkle Nora Rock Me. All 29 minutes of weirdness that we just experienced. Whoa. The, um, the decision making is absolutely baffling to me. I'm shocked by this. This is nowhere near as bad as I thought it would be. The thing that's bad here is the thing that's easily and obviously noticeably objectively bad which is that there are a huge number of scenes in the show that are just keyframes with no animation between them um and it seems i don't know if it's something that they've leaned into just because of the lack of budget or if it's just that they planned to have full animation there and didn't um but it feels wrong and it feels broken and it feels dumb and i think it's pretty obvious when you watch this piece of media that it's like well that's not how this should be. But I don't think it's that far off from what it could be. I think there are ways to make the sort of stop motion style that we got going in at least the first half, like the first chunk, uh, which I think is chapterized as hostage situation, which is hilarious because it's like it implies that there's like an actual situation that we can comprehend and wrap our minds around that gets resolved in a way that's comprehensible. And it's, none of that is true at all. Um but, like, it's so busted. It, it, it's so bass backwards in terms of, like, trying to introduce a character and set them up, um, setting up Nora, setting up this Futuro guy as this weird space wizard. You know, we open up this, this initial opening scene, and the fire looks good, and the space wizard is hilarious. And this is, like, an opening to, like, a 60s movie or, like, a, a weird fantasy film or something. It's bad. It's disconnected. It's dumb. It's meant to add some kind of, like power and and importance to all the events that occur in the thing but instead i just can't help but focus on his weird twitchy eyes like <laughs> twitching all over the place and then the fact that he's not speaking but then it's like booming voice in the air and all we're doing is like fading him and warping the frame a little bit and putting smoke and fire effects on it and it just sort of fades out into nothingness and straight into a, a dope banger so that's the second thing that's noticeable immediately to me about the show is that the music is dope. I guess that's a sign of the times, like they knew how to make a jam. And they do. They make jams. They don't know how to make characters move to those jams. And it immediately feels awkward and stilted and silly when we've got this character shifting into positions, shifting into positions, shifting into positions the way that she does over the course of the episode. It's silly and weird but at the same time it does kind of get the point across immediately becomes obvious that we're like doing these still held backgrounds we're reducing the amount of animation load that we have to do we're jumping between keyframes as though it's a stylistic choice and repeating sections of animation as though it's a stylistic choice 
but it's not really a stylistic choice. It's really a budgetary requirement, I think, and it feels that way. We can tell. I think we can just tell. We can just tell that this isn't the intent. This isn't how this is supposed to look. And yet, I don't super hate it at this point. I think it's actually kind of cool in a weird way at this point, especially in sort of the music video vibe of this introductory sequence. It's kind of fun. We get to see this kind of cute character design, very bland character design, honestly, from weird angles. Um, I mean, at least it's not flashing us panty shots every three seconds, which is another way to take something low budget and turn it into something that people will pay for, um, is to just make it fan service filled. It's not doing that. It's just showing this character grooving out and playing this song to it, which is cool and I guess is supposed to set something up about the character. I guess my biggest issue with it is that we spend this minute and a half of just pure wasted time. We get an ethereal mage tell us that she's something important and is very powerful. And then she dances for a minute to her own theme song, totally out of context, totally unrelated to literally anything else in the episode. It's just a thing that happens. It's like it's like an OP or an intro where it's just unrelated, but it doesn't feel like it flows. It doesn't feel like it's part of the thing. It's just dumb and bad. And then hard cut to airport. Um, the airport is really cool. I like the design of it. I like the way these backgrounds look. I like the the cool plane designs that are like next gen concords kind of. It's neat. And then we get into the actual stuff. And it is still frames. It is literally flip book still frames. Top to bottom all the way through. The sound effects are bad. Wow, 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 wow. The uh, police officers spill out of their vehicles. Tick, 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 tick. Tick, 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 tick. Nothing has tweens. Nothing feels fluid. And yet, for at least a portion of it, it's consistently weird and stilted. And it almost feels like watching, for example, and this is going to be a terrible comparison, I'm sorry, to lovers of this film series, because I love this film series myself, but in a way, it's kind of like watching a Wallace and Gromit film, where you're watching, there is a jerk or a stilt between frames of characters, and obviously it's more fluid in the Wallace and Gromit films because they're, they're a well-done claymation. But it feels kind of like claymation, where your brain recognizes that there's this jump between things, and yet it's still not ineffective at taking the story and telling it, nor is it terribly offensive as such. Um, it works, it's fine, it's not good looking, but it does work. I'm not trying to make excuses for it necessarily, but I think it can be excused to some extent. It works to some extent. Now, it's still a deeply muddled and confusing scene that is not well put together whatsoever. This guy goes, takes a hostage, great, really weird face and angle on the hostage and the character. He straight up, he looks like a particular person, and I don't know who. Um, I feel like it's either a, like a currently active composer or conductor of a, an orchestra who I'm familiar with, I can't remember, or like, just like a, a member of a famous 70s rock band who's a little bit washed up and a little bit older now, but is, is doing well for themselves. That kind of a character. You know who he actually looks like? This is going to be so stupid. Um, he looks like there's a, a guy named Leslie on one of the uh, seasons of MasterChef. Leslie Gilliams. I'm going to go find a picture for you. This guy looks like fucking Leslie Gilliams. Oh, uh, uh, yep. And we're going to go ahead and grab Leslie, grab a picture of him, drop him down in here, and that looks just like him. Um, I'll, I'll pop that into the video at this point, I think, because why not? Um, weird fucking character designs all the way through, I'll be honest. I mean, Nora is a tall, attractive, blonde woman who is a policeman. Simple. The police chief guy, totally simple. Balding, brown-haired police chief man. Uh, Max is a, uh, tiny man who's, like, goblinoid almost? And then there are the other characters. I don't know why the characters are designed the way that they are, but they are at least striking and recognizable, so I have to give them credit there. Oh no, I have a hostage. Oh no, I am running. Yeah, when you actually play through it, it there are some weird moments. Like, he stops here. Is he supposed to be, like, there was supposed to be a, a tween animator going in and, like, making him skid on the floor or something? 
but it's not that fucking hard to do. It doesn't take that many fucking frames, guys. So instead, he just teeter-totters here for a second. And Nora, like, this is a weird framing. Our camera is locked on him, but then we swap and we lock our frame on Nora, who just slides past him. So strange. And then they talk. You don't have any role today. And for a moment, I actually thought he meant, like, oh, this is an acting thing. We're, like, in a movie set. No, we're not in a movie set. Autobaka. And he just smacks her out of frame. Poosh. Oh, God. I love this shit. Hey, don't behave like that, child. What the fuck, man? And then, totally inexplicably, with absolutely no reason for us to understand why this is happening, her glasses flash and she turns into a freaky goblin monster, and the bad guy runs away. Great, we did it. And he gets tackled by some people, and we saved the day. Good job. Um, I won't thank you, because what you need isn't thanks. Let me, yeah, don't worry about it this time, it's on me. That won't do. Take this, it's worth 10,000 monies. And our character's first interaction with us, or, or first thing that we really see her do on camera, besides solve this case and take down this bounty hunter, is look at the money, smile, hold it up, make like a, a prissy face, and fucking light that shit on fire. Whoosh. I give no fucks. I didn't do it for the money. Bro. It's still $10,000. It was a promissory note for ten grand. What are you fucking doing? Well, I guess she's rich. Who cares? What the fuck is this supposed to tell us about Nora? What, what implication does this have for our character? Why is it here? There's no reason. The, the reason is because they thought it would be dope and badass. And I guess to some perspective they might be right. You're like, ah, she's a bad bitch. She doesn't care about no money. But what the fuck? Utterly ridiculous. <laughs> this was merely about what interests me. I would have done it anyway. And then she metas herself. Oh, yeah. That's the kind of line you say when burning up ten grand. Let's go. And he, of course, is like, what the fuck, man? She pats herself on the back for saying a, a, a nasty line. It's so Chael Sonnen. It's so fucking... That was a nasty line by me from Chael Sonnen. I'm going to go find that, too. I'm going to go video download that. Holy shit. It's so fucking stupid. All right. Actually, this is easier if I don't just try to download it. If I just pull it up like this. Tito, go ahead. Tell him what I do so well. Well, he talks well. His mouth has gotten him every fight, big fight that he's had. <laughs> and every time when it's time to present and perform, he's failed. On Saturday night, it's not going to change. What I do well, I come up with heart, I come up with determination, I come up with hard work and perseverance. <laughs> when I get my hand raised, I don't know why. And so are all the millions of fans that have had my back over the last 20 years. Tito always says I'm using my mouth to get my opportunities. The only person I know that made money using their mouth is his ex-wife. <laughs> well, just to correct you, it was never no marriage. Nothing. You're a fucking punk, dude. <laughs> Nothing. That's what, you call, that's what you call class right here compared to no class. That was a nasty line no by class. me. No class. That was a no nasty class line by that's me. That's why you see him with thongs and fucking jeans and a t-shirt. <laughs> no class. They don't call you the bad guy for nothing. A bad Fucking, fucking absurd. But it's the same energy, right? It's like, yeah, nasty fucking line by me. <laughs> what the fuck is that? Now, of course, I mean, Chell Sonnen is a character, right? He's a person playing a character because it gets him, it makes him more money. And, and good for him. Great. Obviously, Nora's a character, too. But in universe, she's supposed to be a believable human being, I guess. With superpowers, I guess. What? Ah, oh, it's so bonkers. Bro, that was all my money. Can't you use that weird power for something more useful? Maybe appear on TV or dance or something. Fuck off. I want to do what I need to do. Great. So she's got, I guess, a reason. She wants to explore her power and has no interest in becoming a spectacle. But I guess resolves that by the end for, by dancing with Max. I don't know. Ask you for a favor. Borrow your power for a reason. Totally incoherent frame of this. Like, this is just so incoherent. What? Oh. <laughs> Trash.
Transition, transition. What the fuck? What's that transition about? I don't fucking know. I guess it transitions us to the place where she's using the power. I get it. I get it. It makes enough sense. It's not totally incoherent. It's like in Skelter Heaven, there are a couple of scenes where we just jump from one place to another, and it's like, what the fuck was that? And they're, they're the same in this circumstance, but then you can sort of backtrack and be like, I guess I get what they were going for. And so in a weird, weird way, I think that Twinkle Nora Rock Me is nowhere near as bad or as unwatchable as I sincerely expected it to be. The only thing here that's really, truly troubling is there are a couple transitions that are really rough and weird. And then there's a bunch of animation that just doesn't make sense and is bad. It's, I mean, it's act actively and actually bad. And now we kind of have an explanation for that, maybe. If they're com computer animating this on a lower budget doing an experimental thing and they don't know the tools they're working with and they're working trying to make it happen, everything clicks into place and makes sense. But of course, they're doing all of this trying to tell a shit story. This story sucks. I mean, it makes sense, but it sucks. The justifications for all the things that happen in the story are terrible. Utterly mediocre, and that's okay, but ugh, it's terrible. It was forgotten long ago. Better to turn back now. What are you planning to do? Well, nobody asks the wind where it's blowing. Ding! And she's just a winky girl. Man, uh, her winks are weird. I feel like we have upgraded the ability of anime, anime girls to wink way more, a whole lot. So we zoom around some landscapes for a while, and then we show that she's on this speeder bike, which she spends a good period of time riding without touching the controls. These are actually some cool-looking sequences. I don't think they're horrible. They're a little weird, but, but I don't think they're horrible. They're tough to animate, and they're doing a pretty good job of them. Um, believable? No. Ripped off from birth? A hundred percent. I don't see a way that it couldn't, have, couldn't be. Um, I, just, I do have to check the timing on it. Birth OVA, 1984, Twinkle Nora Rock Me, 1985. So July 21st, 1984, Birth comes out. And November 21st, 1985, Twinkle Nora Rock Me comes out. What about Dragon's Heaven? Nope, that's 88. Can't be ripped off. Could be from the, the book, from the, 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 the writing, but... Nope. But this is very much Birth. Uh, I, I, I don't see this being unintentional. I see this being a t an intentional ripoff, which is fine. So we wander through the town. There are bad guys. Why does this happen? Tell me right now, in your own words, go into the comments and tell me right now. We see bad guys running around or like just people. You know, it's a spooky place. There are bad people. I'm, so I'm sorry, what? <laughs> I'm sorry, what? We see the whole landscape around her. There's nobody. <laughs> Intimidating cyborg out of nowhere for no reason. And then he just walks away, and everybody else is just like, we're here now, and there is a full town here. We got Kiss, who don't look so good for themselves. And there's a lot of stuff moving here. It's all moving on loops, and it's all shit, but it is moving. Yes, I too walk into new towns like this. Fuck yeah. Um, immediately, I do think this is pretty reasonable. We set up this ginormo guy. We are not consistent at all with how big he is. Like, his hand is the size of that other guy's head, and then later he's just half the size. Max is just around here dancing in space and sliding around and having a good time, I guess. She goes, she orders some milk, everything gets crazy, uh, and then No Touchy starts going, uh, all of the people in this bar immediately try to start raping her because that's literally what they're trying to do. I'm sorry for, for, like, hard trigger warning here, guys. This is unacceptable in a piece of media, I think. 
to do this with your characters. Um, first of all, because of how it portrays all of these individuals, but also just the idea that she's walking, walks into a room and they're all just like, don't be too stick stuck up, come and have some fun with us. It's such an, an easy, dumb, shitty, low, low, like effort shorthand for bad guys being bad. And I really don't like it. Um, I also just, I just don't like it. I can't stand her. And then of course, um, she, I guess, literally Tokyo Tomate, Tomare Tomate, I forget, uh, Zawardo, and stops time and moves through them with zero explanation until Notachi comes after her, uh, bashes people all over the place, which is great, and Max shows, uh, it's so insane, and he's just like, well, woman, me wanty, my honey. There's a bounty on you. I want woman. Um, the fight scene doesn't look bad. Uh, there are elements of Tachino that are actually pretty fun here. I'm not here to arrest you. I'm here to arrest Futuro. Tell me where Futuro is. And he swings this thing around and the scale is wrong and it's weird. But magic powers are dope and he vanishes and we climb on out. And for no good reason, Max follows us, which is great. Uh, we need a gremlin goblin friend um, who is dressed in like a... What is he dressed in? He's like he's like in doctor's scrubs, or I guess it's like a, a blue collar work uniform, like a mechanics uniform maybe, and then a a hard hat. But the type of hard hat, it's like it's like a British explorer's hard hat, like a colon colonizer's hard hat. And then her outfit is sort of similar to that as well. It's sort of like safari ish. I don't fucking know what's going on. Oh yeah, you gotta get out of here. Uh, I feel like he should have like a New York accent. You know. Um, I don't know. Or maybe Boston. I won't speak ill of you, but if you linger, your life is in danger. Here we go. I'm a bounty hunter. I'll give you money. Ooh, you'll give me money? No. I actually really like this moment here. This is kind of cute. It's so silly that, because people don't act this way, but I like this moment where she's like, I'll give you five grand. And then he reflects that his reasoning is similar to hers is not about money. And she goes, he goes, no, I was just interested in you. So I approached you. My fucking guy, my radical honest bro. Let's fucking go. Yes, absolutely. Yes. I'm a huge fan of this. I'm going to talk about this in a meta, meta sense or like a real world sense to you guys. I, I, I hate approaching people. Um, I really do. I hate, uh, specifically, I hate the process of like when I'm attracted to somebody going up and trying to get to know them or approach them or talk to them or whatever. It's really annoying. Um, it's really fraught with a lot of, a lot of issues in part because of what we just saw, which is a fair reflection of what some women do go through, which is guys jumping on them, um, physically, literally, and figuratively. And I hate that shit. I hate being a part of it, and I hate making people uncomfortable, um, especially in a place where they should be feeling comfortable, uh, wherever that may be, whether it's, like, uh, uh, out at a restaurant or out on the street or in a bookstore or, uh, at the gym. It's fucking hard, and it's weird, and it always feels like an imposition on somebody else's life, and that sucks. It's lame. But I think the only thing lamer than approaching somebody that you're interested in and just trying to get to know them or trying to start up a conversation or become a friend or uh, ask them for a, a, a 2.5 pound weight that you need or whatever it is that you're doing, I think the only thing worse than doing that in good faith is doing it in bad faith. And what I mean by that is approaching somebody in a way where you attempt to pretend that you're not approaching them. And then you are actually trying to worm your way into their life in some way, shape, or form. And so my methodology for a little while, and it's hard, and it sucks, and it's stupid, is to be deeply, radically honest, and to be straight out the gate with it, which is weird, and it does push some people away, but in other circumstances, it's really appreciated. So I vibe with Max here, where he's just like, nah, nah, I'm just interested in you, I approached you because of that, what up? lay it out on the table. I'm a real big fan of this, and I'm a big fan of Max for doing it. Good shit, dog. Not in into it for the money, just interested in the girl. Don't fucking insult me. Cash doesn't move my heart. I'm here for love, baby. And um, he doesn't actually say what moves his heart. It's just implied, and that's mediocre. It's, it fails the radically honest check, I think. Um, but it is pretty cool. And then the reaction that we get from her is just like, ah, ah, Ding! And we transition weirdly again. So we are f flying around at the speed of sound and we're making it to our place. Um, so there's this whole conversation. You can't kill her. We need to fight psychic powers and psychic powers. And we get all this exposition about the nature of this place. 
I actually really like these frames. I think this is really cool. If you've got a low budget, at least make your individual frames look neat. And I think this bluish color scheme... And the, again, Dragon's Heaven-esque sort of sketchy style really works here. I, I'm really surprised that this came out before Dragon's Heaven because it does look the same to me. Um, I, I wouldn't be surprised if it, maybe there was an artist who was hired who's like similar or related or some way, but I don't have time or desire to look it up, um, and that's okay. All right, there's no work left on this planet, but there's no way to run. I wanted to save money and go to the city to become a dancer. That's why you have to fight. Well, I don't have any power. Use my power. Why are you afraid? No, I can't help you. And so she goes and she grabs some sticks that will become her drumsticks. She does some terrible animation. Nope. And uh, the... <laughs> <laughs> the worst fucking jam sesh I've ever heard. Max! Come on, Max! Lola. One, two, three, off beat. She's off beat. Oh. 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 Oh, God. And then they bring in an actual drum set. Thank fucking God, because that would be miserable to listen to. I mean, it's like, in Girls Last Tour, there's this great sequence where they've got buckets out in the rain, and, like, the, the drips of water are causing different, like, sounds and, and a, a cacophony. Um, but it's, like, a musically relevant and interesting cacophony of sounds as it drips on these buckets and creates all these different noises, and it's really beautiful. This is not that. This is bad. Nora has magic powers and is great at a lot of things. Drumming is not one of those things. She sucks. But we transition it out to something normal. And we give ourselves a nice theme song and get a little groovy with it. And Max looks all sad. Honestly, the animation reminds me to some extent of like the Hobbit's animation in... Um, the It's the Hobbit movie that's the animated one. Um... No, it's it's Ralph Bakshi's Lord of the Rings, that one. Um so weird. Facial expressions awful, actual dancing worse. Really it really gets rough in here, guys. There are some cool ideas present and there are some moments in the dance sequence that are cool. Like that's actually kind of a cool moment. But it's so obviously fully disconnected from the background. There's no sense of, of momentum or weight or movement, really. There's no use of framing or, or like, different frame, diff frame separations to create movement patterns. Like, as he spins around in an arc, that looks one way when you do it one way, and it looks a different way when you organize the frames differently. And every time that they could make a good decision here or make something interesting or good-looking, they basically fail to do so. It's a really unfortunate sequence and I think maybe more than it being unfortunate it's, it's just bad um it's maybe ambitious and it fails to reach its ambitions especially once we get both characters moving in unison there's a bunch of shit here where they are just sliding and slipping around and hopping skipping jumping from frame to frame in places where they really should have more effort put into this for a core, like, emotional moment, I guess this is, like, a fun moment where our characters vibe together in the middle of the episode, it should look better, and it doesn't. And so it's going to be the thing that most people are going to remember coming out of this episode is, man, there was a really shitty dance sequence here. Still, at the same time, despite it being herky-jerky and awful-looking and weird, and why is the background sliding here? Like, what what is it supposed to be happening? And how are they how are they doing some of these moves? They're just flipping off into space. They're just totally disconnected. It's so weird. Because of one thing and one thing only, this whole sequence is really superbly watchable. And it's the fact that the song's actually a jam. Okay, so weird light up shit. And most importantly for us in this scene, Max sort of falls for Nora here. He sees this weird vision of himself in cool dancer's clothing. Uh, I guess it's cool. And herself in a short skirt that once again never hikes up toward camera. Um, which is honestly like plus one to the show for never doing that, I think. Um, and it's 
weird and disconnected and herky-jerky and strange. And I don't, I mean, it gets even worse as we're jumping like frame to frame. We just ignore that they're in space at all. And they're just doing weird moves that I don't know how they work or what they're doing. And it's just bad. Shout outs to this scene. I think this is the coolest uh, uh, visual of the dance sequence. It's actually rad. Um, there are good ideas here and really bad execution. And that's okay. I'll give it credit where credit is due to some extent. I don't mind if it's just a dream. I can't que keep quiet. Ever since I saw you, I... Uh, Nora! And he doesn't actually say what he's trying to say, but that's okay. Hard transition, cut away, we're on the bike, we're zooming, and we're making our way to the place. Listen, people, we got 30 minutes, we got budget limitations, and we got a story to tell. Let's fucking move. Um, bad guys get ready, good guys get ready, we all get ready. I can't let you go alone. Well, thank you, Max, I'll meet you in town afterward. Okay, and Nora goes, and we start our magic battle. Ooh, fire! Hey, guess what? This fire is actually sick looking. It's edgeless, multicolor streams of fire that are actually well animated, move really well, look really good in isolation, flow around the environment in a cool way, and are great. I think I think the fire looks great. I actually do. All right, so some shit happens. He fucking weird teleport, disappears. We drop rocks on his head. He becomes giant. We run away. Comes a giant lizard. He smashes us. Ha ha, but it doesn't work. Twinkle, Twinkle Nora twinkles all around, and then he turns into Super Goop, which is actually kind of cool and cool looking. Again, it looks like the fire, just goopier, but it's still kind of cool and cool looking, and it's gloopy and goopy. Oh no, ha ha ha. Uh, Max get in, it gets into a st sticky situation. And she is totally fine because his powers have no effect. This is another problem, I think. Nora is just so powerful that we just sort of carte blanche Superman problem and give her the ability to get out of any situation. And that means there's never any tension in the show, which is fine. But that there wasn't going to be anyway because it's not good enough to bring us attention. But when it does try, it fails because of that. We get this character just like... And I guess becoming a child in Nora's lap... What about no touchy? Well, he got jammed into a rock, a rocky style. Ha 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 ha. And then we end off in per perfect 80s style with a weird fucking dance sequence to the same ass theme song. And that's fucking it. We dance with the creepy cyborg who I guess like jam looks like he jams him in the eye. Jam. Fully jams him in the eye with his fist. Go to ED and we're out. Somehow, Twinkle Nora Rock Me was simultaneously way worse than I expected and actually way better. I found it superbly watchable, mostly because the music was was groovy um, and just hilariously, I wouldn't even say necessarily inept, but unfinished is the word. It feels deeply unfinished and maybe inept and maybe a little bit like a school project, maybe. Um, it's bad, but it's not as bad as I thought it would be. It's not utterly incomprehensible like Skelter Heaven is, um, or utterly terribly awful and obviously like an attempt at a cash grab like something like Mars of Destruction is. Um, <sighs> oh, weird show. Oh, that was a weird half hour of anime and another weird half hour of talking about it. Do I, do I know how to feel about Twinkle Nora Rock Me? No. Do I want more explanation and understanding and to like deep dive into why this is the way that it is? Yeah. Yeah, kind of. I'd love to understand more. This thing is weird and intriguing in that way. I'm curious about it. It it gives me the curiouses. But not that much of the curiouses. It doesn't really matter that much. It was a fun fun watch and enjoyable to watch through, but to see it again, maybe not. Maybe if I was getting drunk with a bunch of friends and we were all making fun of it together, especially friends who watch a good bit of anime, then maybe it would be really fun. But at present, I don't ever want to watch this again. Uh, was it miserable? No. But that's not why I don't want to watch it again. It just seems like there's it's a waste of time. There are much better things that I could be watching. I could go rewatch something, anything that I actually enjoy, for example. And that would be a great use of my time versus this, which was not. 
Cool. I think that wraps up our discussion of Twinkle Nora Rock Me. I don't know what else to say about it. This thing is weird and broken and unfinished and kind of fun in its own weird ass way. Um, I enjoyed watching it, it which is weird to say again. I, I enjoyed watching this. Great. I hope you enjoyed it too to some extent and enjoyed the commentary. Um, go ahead and drop any comments down below if you have any information on why this thing is the way that it is or any other in insight or information on it. Please drop that in the comments. I'd love to read it and talk about it maybe next week. But otherwise, I will see you next Monday for more Retro Monday Overdrive. Thanks for watching this week. I'll see you next time, probably for something better than this, um, though that's not the highest bar. Uh, and thank you for watching. Thanks so much. If you want to support the channel or get next week's video a little bit early or be in the Discord or whatever or vote on what I watch next, you can do so in the Patreon, which is linked in the description. Please check that out if you'd like to. Also, if you enjoyed this video, likes, comments, subscribes, all very good. And I will see you next week for more Retro Monday Overdrive. Thank you so much. Have a great day. Have a great week. And I'll see you in the future. Peace.